Denmark and Copenhagen. Denmark, table of contents. All about Denmark, including Copenhagen, with visiting and touring information, geography, history, attractions, and other points of interest. Dr. Sidney Socloff. Dr. Sidney22 at gmail.com. 2022. Narration by Dr. Sidney Socloff. Zoe Phonemes. And Nathan Koltov. For a more complete discussion of YouTube navigation, please go to this video using the link here. Chapter 1. Denmark and Copenhagen. Denmark. Where's the happiest place on earth? No. It's not Disneyland or Disney World. According to surveys that rank the happiness of people in countries around the world, the clear leader is Denmark, cold. Dreary, unspectacular Denmark. Social scientists and pollsters have given elaborate questionnaires to hundreds of thousands of people around the globe. One of the largest of the studies that rank the happiness of countries around the world is the World Map of Happiness from the University of Leicester. All the happiness surveys ask people basically the same question How happy are you? This is the flag of Denmark. Denmark is officially Kingdom of Denmark, or in Danish, Kongerigat Denmark. Chapter 2 Location and Geography Chapter 2 Denmark is in North Central Europe, just to the north of Germany. The Scandinavian countries are Denmark, Sweden, and Norway. Denmark is the smallest and southernmost of the Scandinavian countries. Denmark has a southern border with the German state, or land, of Schleswig-Holstein. On the west and north is the North Sea, and on the east is the Baltic Sea. Schleswig-Holstein was once part of Denmark. It was lost to Prussia in the War of 1866. To the north, between Denmark and Norway, is an arm of the North Sea called the Skagerrak. On the east, between Denmark and Sweden is the strait known as the Kattegat. The narrow strait between Denmark and Sweden near Copenhagen is called the Ersund. The capital of Denmark is Copenhagen, or in Danish, Copenhagen, located on the Ersund across from Sweden. Denmark is comprised of the peninsula of Jutland, and some 400 islands to the east of Jutland. Copenhagen is on the island of Shetland. Chapter 3 how big is Denmark? The country's total land area is one and a half the size of the state of Maryland. Or twice the size of New Jersey. Here is a comparison of the areas of the Scandinavian countries in square kilometers. We see that Finland, Norway and Sweden are all about the same size but that Denmark is very much smaller. Finland is just a little bit larger than Norway in area, and somewhat smaller than Sweden. Now the Netherlands and the United Kingdom are also included for purposes of comparison. The largest part of Denmark in area is Jutland, representing 70% of the total. The largest of the islands is Zealand, or Shetland, and the second largest island is Funen, or Foon. The capital and largest city is Copenhagen, 
or in Danish, Copenhagen, located on the eastern edge of Sjælland across from Sweden. The second largest city is Aarhus, which is the major urban center of Jutland. Denmark is a small country. The distance from Esbjerg in the east to Copenhagen in the west is only about 160 miles, or 260 kilometers. The distance from the northern tip of Jutland at Skagen down to the border with Germany is about 200 miles, or 320 kilometers. Here is a physical or relief map of Europe. We see that most of Norway and Sweden are indeed mountainous. Denmark, however, is remarkably flat, with elevations seldom exceeding 300 feet, or 100 meters. Denmark is part of the great North European plain that extends from northern France through Belgium, Germany, and into Poland. Although Norway is almost entirely mountainous with very little land available for farming, and there are some relatively level areas in the southern part of Sweden, almost all of Denmark is suitable for farming. Chapter 4 The Population of Denmark Denmark has a population of 5.4 million, about the same as Norway and Finland and about half that of Sweden. The population of Denmark at 5.4 million is just a little bit more than the U.S. state of Maryland at 5.3 million, and Arizona, which has a population of 5.2 million. Here the Netherlands, the U.K. and the U.S. have been included for comparison. Denmark has a very large population density and is by far the most densely populated of the Scandinavian countries. Now the United States, the United Kingdom and the Netherlands has been added to the chart. We see that Denmark is very densely populated compared to the United States but still is much less densely populated than the Netherlands. We see that the population density of Denmark is about five times greater than that of the United States. Chapter 5 Danish Colonies Two remote island groups in the Atlantic Ocean became integral parts of the Kingdom of Denmark when their colonial status was transformed by full incorporation into Denmark. One is the Faroe Islands, which have a distinctive language and culture. The most remote part of the Kingdom of Denmark is Greenland, an Arctic wilderness, mostly covered by ice. Most of the inhabitants of Greenland are native Inuit, but many are of mixed Danish and Aboriginal ancestry. Greenland has an area that is 50 times larger in area than Denmark itself. Greenland is the ancestral homeland of Inuit-speaking Greenlanders also known as Inuit, or Eskimos, who formerly lived by hunting and fishing. Most of the inhabitants of Greenland live in scattered coastal communities near the southern tip of the island. Home rule was granted to the Faroes in 1948, and to Greenland in 1979, though foreign policy and defense remain under Danish control. Each area is distinctive in history language, and culture. Chapter 6 Though small in territory and population, Denmark has nonetheless played a notable role in European history. At various times in history, the Scandinavian countries were under various unions and joint rulers as this chart shows. The Scandinavian peoples have close cultural and historical ties and except for the Finns, spoke very similar languages. As a result, though we had various times attempts made to unify these countries. However, differences that did exist in terms of geography, economic life, 
and outlook made a permanent union difficult. Angles, along with Frisians, Saxons, and Jutes invaded England around the year 500. They drove out the native Celts number to Wales in the west, and Scotland in the north, and established Anglo-Saxon kingdoms. This marked the beginning of the English language. Indeed. The words English and England come from the Angles who came from the southern part of the Jutland Peninsula. The Angles came from a region called Angleland in the southern part of the Jutland Peninsula. They landed in the east of England, in the part still known as East Anglia. The Jutes came from Danish peninsula of Jutland. They are thought to have landed in the West Saxon region, the Isle of Wight, and in Kent. In the Viking era, between the years 750 to 1000, Danes and other Scandinavians changed European society when the Vikings undertook marauding, trading, and colonizing expeditions. The Danes controlled a large part of England called the Dane Law, or Danish Law, under King K. Newt number, until the year 918. This is the part of England called the Dane Law, or Danish Law. The Vikings, or Northmen, established a dukedom in northern France called Normandy. In the 12th through the 14th centuries, the Danes were in the Kingdom of Denmark, in what is roughly the same area as present-day Denmark. At various times in history, there were unions and alliance between the Scandinavian countries in 1397. Eric of Pomerania was crowned King of Denmark, Norway, and Sweden at Kalmar, forming the Kalmar Union. The Kalmar Union uniting the Scandinavian countries lasted from 1397 to 1523. The Kalmar Union was the combination of the three crowns of Denmark, Sweden, and Norway, effected at Kalmar, Sweden in 1397. At that time Sweden included the present area of Finland. This union also included Pomerania in the coastal region of present-day Germany and Poland. In the 16th through 18th centuries, Denmark, Norway, and Iceland were united under in one kingdom. After 1814, Norway was no longer united with Denmark, but was united with Sweden. Denmark and Iceland were united in one kingdom. In the 20th century, Iceland became an independent country. Norway became an independent country in 1905. Denmark was neutral in World War I. On the outbreak of war in 1939 Denmark, in common with the other Scandinavian countries, issued a declaration of neutrality. However, on April 9, 1940, German troops crossed the border, and after token resistance the Danish government submitted to a military occupation of the country. Chapter 7 Danish is the official language. It is closely related to Norwegian, with which it is mutually intelligible, especially in the written form. Danish also very closely related to Swedish. Although the Afes Scandinavian languages, excepting Finnish, are close relatives, they are sufficiently different to be understood easily only by those schooled or experienced in the effort. Many educated or urban Danes have learned to speak a second language. English has now replaced German as the most popular second language. Here's an example of numbers from 1 to 10 in English, Danish and Norwegian. We see that these numbers are almost exactly the same, indicating the very close relationship between these two languages. Now Swedish and Icelandic have been added. 
We still see a close relationship. We see that Norwegian, Danish, Swedish, and Icelandic are all very similar, and not much different from English. We also note that the numbers in Finnish, which is not in the Indo-European language family, are considerably different, and bear little or no resemblance to numbers in the other languages. Here two other Germanic languages have been added, Dutch and German. We see a strong resemblance among these Germanic languages. We again note that Finnish is not a Germanic or even Indo-European language. Chapter 8 Copenhagen Or in Danish Copenhagen Is pronounced as Copenhagen From now on The Danish spelling and pronunciation of Copenhagen will often be used for Copenhagen. What does the name Copenhagen have to do with the word cheap? A little etymology please. A little etymology of the word cheap. The original sense was bargaining, barter, exchange of commodities after the widespread use of money. It was buying and or selling, and in later times often restricted to just buying. Or purchasing. A Chapman was a trader. A shopman. From Siapan or Saipan. To buy or sell. The German equivalent surname is Kaufmann. Kobenhauen means merchants harbor from Koben number, merchants and Hauen number, harbor. Chapter 9. Copenhagen Location and Population. Copenhagen is the capital and largest city of Denmark. It is the center of Danish life and the entertainment capital of Northern Europe. The population of the city is 620,000 and the metropolitan area population is 1,100,000. The population of Copenhagen is comparable to the U.S. cities of Milwaukee, Wisconsin or Memphis, Tennessee. Copenhagen is in the easternmost part of Denmark, right across the water from Sweden. On the islands of Zeeland, Shaland, and Amager. The strait between the Danish island of Shaland and Sweden is called the Ersund, or the Sound. The Danish town of Helsinger is the site of Elsinore Castle, Kronberg in Danish. Made famous by Shakespeare's play Hamlet, it is just a short distance north of Copenhagen at Helsingør, and overlooks the narrow strait between Denmark and Sweden at Helsingør. Between Helsingør and the Swedish town of Helsingborg is the narrowest part of the Ersund, a gap of only 10 miles, or 16 kilometers. Kronberg Castle was made famous by William Shakespeare, who used the fortress as Elsinore Castle in his play Hamlet. It is only about 20 miles, or 32 kilometers across the Ersund from Copenhagen to Malmö in Sweden. There is now a long bridge of about 15 miles, or 24 kilometers across the Ersund from Copenhagen to Malmö in Sweden. Chapter 10 Wonderful, wonderful Copenhagen wonderful, wonderful Copenhagen Here is the Copenhagen metropolitan area. Most of the points of interest are in the rather compact city center. Cruise ships usually dock just to the north of the city center about 1.5 miles or 2.4 kilometers from the center of town. This shows the city center of Copenhagen. This shows the location of the most common cruise ship dock. The famous Little Mermaid statue is just a few minutes walk from weather ship docks. Nearby are the fortifications of Castellet. Castellet is one of the best preserved fortifications in Northern Europe. Constructed in the form of a pentagram, with bastions at its corners. 
Castellet was part of the ring of ramparts which used to encircle Copenhagen. Several buildings are located within the grounds of Castellet, including a church, as well as a windmill. The area houses various military activities, but it mainly serves as a public park and a historic site. Chapter 11 Here is the Copenhagen city center, and the pedestrian area known as the Strogat. The Strogat is a pedestrian area of five streets in the heart of Copenhagen, extending ten blocks long. At one end of the Strogat is Tivoli Gardens, Copenhagen's Radhus, or City Hall, and the Radhus Pladsen, or City Hall Park. We see again that at one end of the Strogat is Tivoli Gardens, Copenhagen's Radhus, City Hall, and the Radhus Pladsen. City Hall Park. This is the Radhus, City Hall, and the Radhus Pladsen, City Hall Park. This is the beginning of the Strogat at Radhus Pladsen, City Hall Park. Hail some of the many street performers on the Strogat. At the other end of the Strogat is Konigan's New Torv, the King's New Squa, and New Hauen or New Harbo. This is the end of the Strogat with Conan's New Torv, the King's New Square and New Hauen. This is the Conan's New Torv, King's New Square. This is the Conan's New Torv, King's New Square. Street performers and the entertainment is provided free for everybody on the Strogat. Chapter 12 Canals in New Holland Like Amsterdam, Copenhagen has many canals. The sailors' quarters today, as in times past, is the area known as New Holland. New Holland is a quaint area with an atmosphere commonly associated with sailors. This shows the location of New Holland. These are views of New Hauen. One of the most popular tourist activities in Copenhagen is to take a boat cruise on the canals and waterways. These boats can be boarded at New Hauen. This is a canal cruise boat. These are canal cruise boats. This is a canal cruise into Copenhagen Harbor. These are views of the canal cruise. The Amalienberg Palace near Neuhauen is the residence of the Danish royal family. This is the Amalienberg Palace near Neuhauen and Koningen's New Torv. The Amalienberg Palace is the residence of Queen Margrethe II of Denmark. It consists of full mansions surrounding a large square. You can watch the precision changing of the guard ceremony when the Queen is in residence. The Christiansborg Palace houses the Danish Parliament and Supreme Court. The Christiansborg Palace is located just a few blocks from the Strogat. This is the central Copenhagen area. A few blocks west of Tivoli Gardens in the Strogat is the famous Carlsberg Brewery. The Carlsberg Brewery Visitor Center is housed in the 1847-era building that was the old brewery. Exhibits and video explain brewing technology, both old and new. At the end of the tour is the usual tasting room. Chapter 13 Tivoli Gardens are not just gardens. They are much more. This shows the location of the Tivoli Gardens. Tivoli Gardens was first opened in 1843 over 150 years ago. 
Tivoli Gardens was one of the world's first amusement parks. Tivoli Gardens has musical performances, entertainers, rides, and at night, thousands of twinkling lights. This is Tivoli Gardens. These are some of views of Tivoli Gardens. More views of Tivoli Gardens. More views of Tivoli Gardens. Tivoli Gardens at night is spectacular. Tivoli Gardens. Here are my top three picks for Copenhagen. One, stroll the Strogat. Two, cruise the canals. And three, twilight at Tivoli. Chapter 14. Hans Christian Andersen spent much of his writing career in Copenhagen. The year 2005 was the bicentennial celebration of Hans Christian Andersen's birth. There were celebrations of this event all over Denmark. The statue of Hans Christian Andersen in Legoland is made from Lego blocks. The original statue of Hans Christian Andersen is in Copenhagen. Hans Christian Andersen was never married and never had children of his own. Hans Christian Andersen was born in 1805 and died in 1875. He was born in the town of Odense. He was the only child of a poor cobbler and lived in his cottage. Odense is on the island of Foon and about 90 miles west of Copenhagen. Hans Christian Andersen left Odense and moved to Copenhagen when he was 14 years old. Andersen went to seek his fortune in Copenhagen as an actor and singer. Andersen lived in his small apartment in the Sailors district of New Hauen. It was here in New Hauen that Andersen wrote his story of the Little Mermaid. A few blocks east of Tivoli Gardens and the Strogat in Copenhagen is the famous statue of the Little Mermaid. It is also very close to the cruise ship. This shows the location of the famous statue of the Little Mermaid. The statue of the Little Mermaid overlooks the harbor area. Hans Christian Andersen had very little formal education, so he went to work educating himself. As he did his skills at writing and illustrating improved, and his fame as a writer grew. Much of his work was autobiographical in nature. For example, the story of the ugly duckling was about himself. He fell in love with the famous Swedish singer, Jenny Lind, known as the Swedish Nightingale. Jenny Lind rebuffed his advances, and in his disappointment, he wrote the story of the Nightingale. Hans Christian Andersen eventually returned home to his widowed mother in Odense. Today his stories are read around the world in a hundred different languages. Only the Bible is translated into more languages than his stories. Chapter 15 Victor Borga was born in Copenhagen in 1909 as Borge Rosenbaum. He was a humorist, entertainer and world-class pianist, and was affectionately known as the Clown Prince of Denmark and the Great Dane. Borg was known worldwide for his irrepressible humor, which combined depth and delivery, clever wordplay, sati, irreverence, and physical comedy. He combined this with his extraordinary skill at the piano. This sustained Borga through a performing career of more than 70 years. His trademark bits included his phonetic punctuation, in which he read a story, but used a sound for each punctuation mark. He also had his inflated language, in which each number or homonym of a number became the next higher number.
wonderful became tutorful, etc. He never lost their power to entertain. Borga's mother began teaching him piano when he was three, and it was soon apparent that he was a prodigy. While in his teens, he studied on a scholarship at the Coben Hound Music Conservatory, and later in Vienna and Berlin. On the way to becoming a concert pianist, however, Borga discovered his flair for comedy and his ability to respect the music. This all the while skewering the pomposity often present in the world of musicians. Luckily, Borga was performing in Stockholm when the Nazis invaded Denmark in 1940, and he soon was able to flee to the U.S. He began performing on radio in 1941, and by 1945 had his own show. His debut at Carnegie Hall came that same year. Appearances in nightclubs, on other concert stages, and on television followed. His one-man show, Comedy in Music, ran for 849 performances in 1953 to 1956, and set a Broadway record for a solo show. Borga wrote, with Robert Sherman, the book's My Favorite Intermissions, 1971, and My Favorite Comedies in Music, 1980. Here is Victor Borga in Live at London Palladium, in 1972. In 1963, Borga helped create the Thanks to Scandinavia Foundation, which funded scholarships for Scandinavian students in gratitude for the aid many Scandinavians gave to Jews during the Holocaust. This is a statue of Victor Borg. Chapter 16 A well-known product of Denmark is the Lego blocks O.L. Kirk Christensen and his son Godfred Kirk invented Lego. In 1932, O.L. Kirk Christensen, master carpenter and joiner, founded his carpentry business in the village of Billund in Denmark to make step ladders ironing boards, and wooden toys. The wooden toys became O.L.'s most successful product. The company adopted the name Lego in 1934. Lego is formed from the Danish word Legod, meaning play well. In 1947, the Lego company was the first in Denmark to buy a plastic injection molding machine for making toys. A far rear on the of the plastic Lego bricks was Christensen's automatic binding bricks. Created in 1949. In 1954, the bricks were renamed Lego Merston, or Lego Bricks, in 1955. The company launched a Lego system of play, with 28 sets and 8 vehicles. In 1968 the idea of making a permanent exhibition of Lego models was conceived, and the first Lego Land opened in Billund. In addition to the original Lego Land in Billund, there are now Lego Lands in Windsor in the UK, California, and Germany. This is the U.S. Capitol building in Legoland. This is Mount Rushmore in Legoland. There is a Lego store on the Strauga in Copenhagen. Chapter 15 Will it be hot? Or will it be cold in Copenhagen? The great majority of the population of Scandinavia lives in the region between about 55 and 60 degrees north latitude. Copenhagen is at 56 degrees north latitude. This corresponds to a region in northern Canada, about 1,500 miles or 2,400 kilometers north of New York City, which is at about 40 degrees north latitude. 
Miami. Florida is about 1,000 miles or 1600 kilometers south of New York City at about 25 degrees north latitude. Scandinavia is way up north. Is it very cold up there? No. Not nearly as much as you might think. Despite Scandinavia's far northern latitude, most of Denmark, Norway, and Sweden has a moderate climate, tempered by the warm waters of the North Atlantic Current, which is a continuation of the Gulf Stream. For example, Bergen, on the west coast of Norway, is at a latitude of 61 degrees north which is about the same as Anchorage, Alaska. However, Bergen has an average temperature of 35 degrees Fahrenheit, 1.7 degrees Celsius, in January, and 61 degrees Fahrenheit, 16.1 degrees Celsius, in July. It is only in the most remote inland areas of Scandinavia that the winters are harsh. The Gulf Stream originates in the warm waters of the Caribbean Sea in the Gulf of Mexico. The Gulf Stream then flows northwestward along the coast of the United States, and then further eastward in the Atlantic Ocean. The North Atlantic Drift is a continuation of the Gulf Stream and flows northwestward toward northern Europe and Scandinavia. The warm waters of the Gulf Stream keep the temperatures of the UK and Scandinavia much warmer than would otherwise be the case. Okay, now give me some real numbers. We will next look at temperatures in degrees Fahrenheit throughout the year in Copenhagen, together with the yearly average temperature. Here are average high and low temperatures in degrees Fahrenheit throughout the year in Copenhagen. We see that the midday temperatures will likely be only in the high 50s, and at night it will drop to the chilly mid to low 40s. The winter high temperatures in January are in the 37 degree Fahrenheit range, and the lows go down to 30 degrees Fahrenheit. The summertime high temperatures go up to 69 degrees Fahrenheit in July, and the lows go down to a somewhat chilly 55 degrees Fahrenheit. Rainfall in Caribbean Hown Here is average monthly precipitation in inches throughout the year in Copenhagen, together with the yearly total. We see that middle to later summer months are those with the greatest precipitation. Chapter 18. What time is it in Copenhagen? Here are the European time zones. Denmark is at GMT plus 1, which is one hour ahead of Greenwich Mean Time. When it's 12 noon in London, it is 1 p.m. in Copenhagen. When it's 12 noon in London, it is 1 p.m. in Copenhagen and Berlin, and 2 p.m. in Helsinki, Finland, and 3 p.m. in St. Petersburg, Russia. Chapter 19. The Money of Denmark. Currency exchange rates can change daily. For the latest exchange rate, click on this icon. 1 Denmark krona equals 0.13 US dollars. And 1 US dollar equals 7.64 Denmark krona. 100 Denmark krona equals 13.1 US dollars. This is a 100 krono banknote. Equal to 13.1 US dollars. Recommended videos, Denmark and Copenhagen. Recommended video, Geography Now, Denmark. Recommended video, Denmark Explained. Recommended video, 101 Facts About Denmark.
Recommended video, 10 best things to do in Copenhagen, what to do in Copenhagen. Recommended video, top 10 best things to do in Copenhagen city travel guide. Denmark, table of contents. Thanks for watching. Please watch some more of my great videos.